Hey y'all, welcome back. Um, it is so hard to believe that we are on day eight of this renovation series um, and we're just moving right along. So today uh, my main focus was to get these shiplap panels up. Um, I already got the brick ones up last time and before I start painting anything, I need to get these shiplap ones up and get it trimmed out. So obviously y'all know I like to measure things before um, I cut them out and map them out. And this was kind of like a weird piece because if I would have thought about this beforehand, I would have put it in before I put these cabinets in, but it's okay. It doesn't really matter. Um, so the cabinets have this weird little like dip um, in the bottom corner. And so you'll see I have like a little three quarter inch notch that I'm going to have to make in like a weird spot. Um, anyway, and so in order to um, make sure that I'm getting the studs when I put this in, um, this company actually sent me this like laser level and I was super excited about it. Y'all know that I love new tools. Um, so I tried this thing out today and I'm actually really impressed. So the company is called Lasgu, um, and I'll put it, I'll put this in my Amazon storefront if anybody's interested in looking at it. Um, but basically it's like a wall laser level. And so the only catch was I needed to make sure that the camper was level before I used it. Um, and you see, it's kind of like moving up and down there. Um, and that's because I didn't have the stabilizers down. So the next time I use this, when I'm going to put tile in, I'm definitely going to put the stabilizers down so it's not so shaky. But it was okay because once I walked over there, I just kind of waited a second for it to like stabilize out. And then I could mark my mark. Um, and so I could know exactly where my metal framing was when I put my panel in. Um, so I know where to attach it to. All right, so now time to start cutting out. Um, this is the shiplap panel from Home Depot. I think it was like $35 or something like that. It wasn't super expensive, but I've actually never used these before. And my main reasoning for using this versus cutting like six inch strips like I normally do is basically just time. So if you go to Home Depot and buy just a sheet of like five millimeter underlayment, which is what I typically make shiplap out of, it's like $25, $27. Um, I buy it at Builders Discount Center for $17, $18 around that area. Um, but still, it just didn't seem worth the extra like 10 or $15 to have to cut out every single strip myself. So I figured I would try this and see how I liked it. Um, and I actually liked it a lot. I like the look that it gives. Um, I mean, it's just MDF, so it cuts like anything else. So y'all already know, um, I have all this kind of mapped out on my piece of paper and I'm basically cutting it, um, to width or, and then to length. And then what I'm doing right here is I'm making those, um, notches for the cabinets that are on the side. Um, because if you look at the shape, you know, obviously the middle section is going to be bigger than the two side sections. Um, so really the only way to get this square and done correctly is with that framing square that you see right there. That's my probably most used, um, measuring device when it comes to cutting out like weird shaped panels and stuff like that. Um, of course, along with my regular square, but that one's not nearly as long. So when I need something like this, that was like 15 inches over that framing square just is a lifesaver. So now I got it all penciled out. I'm just going to cut it out with my jigsaw. Um, I'm going pretty slow with this because it is MDF and it's pretty fragile. It kind of tends to like throw MDF up at you if you don't go slow and then it makes a jagged edge. Um, so ideally you'd cut this upside down, but I just forgot and it didn't matter anyway, because I was going to put trim around it. So you'd never really see the jagged edge anyway. Anyway, same thing for this side. You see I'm supporting that one piece right there because if you just let this flop around, it will break the entire panel. Like that is how flimsy this stuff is. And so I always try to support one side if I have a side kind of like hanging off like that. So now time for the test fit and we'll see if I know how to do math. Um, and I actually do know how to do math, guys, is what the conclusion is. Um, so you see right there, I'm just kind of putting it up there to make sure it generally fits and it actually fit really well. 
Um, so my next thing to do is I have two outlets, um, one on either side, and I need to mark my holes so I know exactly where to drill the hole to pull those wires through. So that's what I'm doing right here. I just measure down from the cabinet and then over, and they were both the same on each side, and I just got um, just a drill bit and just drilled a hole in it. Nothing too fancy about that. So after that, I can go ahead and put this panel up. Um, so this is uh, just liquid nails, nothing crazy. It's just a project liquid nails. Um, gives it a little extra adhesion and I just always use it. I use one full tube on this um, and I got some liquid nails on the actual board itself. And so I wipe it up because if it dries like that, then it like will cake on there and it'll like peel the whole like shiplap panel off. So I don't want that. Anyway, um, so this was kind of like a, I don't know, this is where you could use two people, but I didn't have two people because trying to feed both of these wires through um, and making sure it's centered and all the way up was kind of difficult, but I ended up getting it um, and then I'm just tacking it in and then I'll go back to those wires. But now that I have those wires fed through, um, I'm just going ahead and tacking it in and I'm using those marks that I made with that laser level before. Um, I could have brought the level back out just to make sure that I got it perfectly straight, but there's actually lines on the board. So I kind of just lined up where my marks were on the cabinets and lined up uh, just a straight line all the way across using my brain and it worked perfectly. So that was it. Okay, next I want some shiplap in this bathroom um, and uh, <laughs> I like the vertical shiplap in the bathroom versus the horizontal shiplap. So y'all don't laugh at me because I did this last time and it looked so good. So I'm going to do it again. Um, so I'm just measuring right here. I'm going to use the whole four foot panel for this um, because I need it to uh, extend all the way over to the new shower that I'm going to build. Um, and I'm actually saving the piece that I cut off from the last one because I need maybe like an extra six inches. So I'm gonna put that one in after I put the shower in. So there's gonna be a little bit of a gap between the shower and this paneling until I get around to doing that. So nothing crazy about this one. I'm basically just cutting it to height uh, and then adding an outlet. Um, there is a GFCI outlet on that back wall. And so right here, I'm just measuring where I want my outlet. And how I do that is I basically just pick up one point on the square of the outlet and I just measure the height and um, the distance to the closest edge and then you just build a square box around that and it works really easy. It doesn't matter what point you pick as long as you measure correctly. Um, so that's what I'm doing right here. Again, using that uh, framing square that I have right there. Love that thing. So I would highly suggest getting one of those if you're going to do this. It just makes life a lot easier to keep things square. And then I can cut this square with my multi-tool. Um, I also love my multi-tool. There's several tools that are my favorite. Um, this and my router are probably my two favorite. I mean, other than like my table saw, obviously I could never go without a table saw. So anyway, um, yep. Just cut the hole out. Nothing, nothing crazy about it guys. I don't know why this is taking me so long, but I, I guess I'm getting tired. It's also really hot outside. So I've sweated a lot today. Sorry guys. Um, and then I just punch it out. Boop. There it goes. So now that I have the panel cut out, this is going to be very similar to the brick. I need to take this window out to be able to router out the hole for the window. Um, now this window I've already had out once before and I resealed it. And so I'm not going to take the whole window out. I'm just going to take the trim piece out because it's already resealed on the other side. And it's basically stuck on to the outside of the camper. Like it's not going to come off because just of the way that that sealant is built, it, it ain't going anywhere. Um, so here I am bringing the panel in. I had to bring it in uh, basically vertical because I tried it horizontal and I couldn't flip it in the bathroom, duh. But I got to work it around all of these water lines right here. And there's actually a, um, the black tank flush is coming from the back. So I'm going to have to drill a hole uh, that I haven't done that yet, but everything lined up perfectly like I wanted it to. Um, so I would actually hope so. Cause I mean, it was literally a square and then I cut one thing out of it. So if I didn't cut this right, I would have been worried about my mental health. 
Okay, same thing for this one. Um, just get some liquid nails. I just kind of, I didn't bother taking the whole thing off. I just kind of peeled it back and stuck my arm in there. And you see, I got some on my shoulder too. Whoopsie. That's why I wear bad clothes when I do this. Um, and that is me drilling a hole. So I know where the, relatively where the window is since I can't drill it from the other side. Um, now I'm just pushing it up against the cabinet that's right there and making sure that it's nice and square and then tacking it in with my nail gun. And I forgot to mention this before, but this is an aluminum studded trailer. And so I'm using my 16 gauge nailer with like, I think it's either inch or inch and a quarter nails. Um, so anything that's aluminum, use a 16 gauge nailer. Do not use an 18 gauge nailer because it will not work and it will jam up your nailer. Um, anyway, now that that looks nice and good and fresh and clean, I'm fixing to make it look very dirty. And y'all already know that a router is literally my favorite tool in the whole world. So I'm fixing to router out this hole uh, where the window is and it's just so satisfying. Obviously I'm wearing my uh, respirator because it's gross and MDF is disgusting. Um, so yeah, this is just a router with a flush trim bit. I know y'all have seen me do this a million times, but it's always so satisfying and it even stayed in and then bloop popped right out and it was so nice. Um, anyway, so yeah, now I got to clean up all of this MDF dust that's here. Um, because it just, it literally gets everywhere. It's everywhere. And if I clean it up as I go, it doesn't get everywhere else and it's not so bad. So just cleaning up all the mess that's here. And after that's clean, I can go ahead and put this trim piece um, on, and I say on, slightly on. I thought I was gonna be able to get by without having to cut the uh, trim piece out of this, but I didn't like the way the window was pulling in. And so I got a pencil and I marked all the way around the frame right there of the window. And then I took it back off and same thing with the brick paneling. Um, and actually I ended up tacking this corners of the paneling into the aluminum frame right there. Um, and then after that, I got my multi-tool and I basically cut out the shape that I had just drew. That way the window uh, frame sinks all the way in and pulls tight together. Um, Cause what you don't want is a leak in your window after you've done all this work. Um, and how I usually like to do this is I go around one time and make a shallow cut. That way I know that everything is straight and in line. Um, and then I go in and do it a deeper cut to take the rest of that trim off. Now I'm vacuuming again and vacuuming myself because it's gross. And now I can put the window trim back in and it sinks all the way in. The window is perfectly sealed and it makes me happy. It's always so funny to look at myself on camera after I'm like worked for most of the day because I'm disgusting and like covered in dirt and my face is gross. So enjoy that show guys. All right, let's talk about trim. Um, so you know, most people will probably use quarter round for literally everything and you can totally do that. Um, but for like the inside of cabinets and just for places that aren't, you're not going to see very often. I like to just use a flat trim. Of course, you can go buy this at any hardware store, but since I always have lots of scraps of like quarter inch plywood, I actually just use quarter inch plywood instead of going and buying it pre-cut. So I just cut these into strips of just three quarter inch. Um, and then I give it a little light sand to kind of smooth the edges and just tack it up there. I mean, that's literally it. You cannot tell that this is just regular wood when you paint over it. Um, and I think it just gives it a really nice look. And especially since this is pretty much the trim that manufacturers use anyway, it's just that flat trim. Um, it really doesn't look like it's not supposed to be there, to be honest with you. Um, and especially for like the inside of cabinets. I love using this stuff for the inside of cabinets. It just makes it look so good. Um, right here where that brick was, obviously could have used like quarter round or something similar. But um, it just it it just looks fine. Like I, And most of this won't be showing anyway because I'm going to build a little... Um, just a little, I, I don't know, like a spot for, to hold your phone, like a little table or something on each side. So you're really only going to see 15 inches of it. Um, anyway, so we're almost ready for paint. Yay. Day nine. Um, I won't see you guys tomorrow, but maybe the next day I'll have something new.